The crisp air of the early morning brushed against Jack's face as he stepped out onto the porch of his countryside home. The sun was just peeking over the horizon, painting the sky with streaks of orange and pink. Beside him, Spark, his energetic golden retriever puppy, wagged his tail vigorously, eager for their daily walk. All right, Spark, let's see if you can keep up today, Jack teased, clipping the leash onto Spark's collar. The puppy barked in excitement, tugging at the leash as they started down the winding path that led through the woods. As they walked, Jack's communicator buzzed. He pulled it from his pocket and saw a message from his colleague, Mara, at the Earth Council. Morning, Jack. Don't forget, today's the briefing for the conference. We need that charm of yours with the delegates. Jack chuckled and typed a quick reply, letting her know he'd be there. He pocketed the device and looked down at Spark, who was busy chasing a butterfly. Life's simple for you, isn't it, buddy? The tranquility of the moment was broken by a sudden, sharp whirring sound overhead. Jack looked up to see a small drone zipping through the trees. It wasn't one of the Earth models. This one bore the sleek, metallic design typical of Draconis technology. Odd, Jack muttered to himself, watching the drone hover nearby. It seemed to be observing them. What do you want? Jack called out, half expecting no response. To his surprise, the drone emitted a series of chirps and whistles, a rough translation appearing on his communicator. Monitoring. New directive received. Please keep clear. Before Jack could respond, Spark, curious about the hovering intruder, lunged forward, barking up at the drone. The device emitted a harsh, high-pitched sound, and without warning, a small but intense pulse of energy shot out, striking Spark. The puppy yelped and fell back, motionless. Spark! Jack rushed to his side, scooping up the limp body of his puppy. There was no sign of injury, but Spark was clearly gone. Anger surged through him as he looked up at the drone, which was starting to move away. Come back here, he shouted, his voice thick with emotion. The drone paused, then returned, hovering in front of him. The translator on Jack's communicator buzzed again. Apologies for the inconvenience, collateral damage noted, reporting back. Collateral damage? He was my dog! Jack's voice cracked as he held Spark closer. The drone seemed to hesitate, then it turned and sped off into the sky. Jack sat there for a long moment, cradling Spark. He finally stood, his mind racing with grief and fury. He knew what he had to do. Walking back to the house with heavy steps, he laid Spark down gently and went inside to prepare for what would come next. Later that morning, as Jack entered the briefing room at the Earth Council, Mara rushed over. Jack, are you all right? You look... They killed him, Mara. They killed Spark, Jack interrupted, his voice steady but cold. Who did? What happened? Mara's eyes widened in shock. The Draconis. It was just a drone, but it... Jack couldn't finish. He took a deep breath and composed himself. I need to speak to the Council. Now. Mara nodded, understanding the urgency. Right away, Jack. Let's make sure they listen. As they walked towards the Council chambers, Jack's determination hardened. The Draconis Empire had just ignited a fire, and he would make sure they regretted it. Jack stood before the Earth Council, the members' faces a mosaic of concern and curiosity. The room was filled with the top diplomats and military leaders from across human territories, all waiting to hear what had transpired that morning. Mara, thank you, Jack started, nodding towards his colleague who had introduced him. He took a deep breath, his hands clenched into fists at his sides. This morning, a Draconis drone killed my puppy, Spark in what they dismissed as collateral damage. This isn't just about a pet. It's about the Draconis Empire's disregard for non-Draconis life. A murmur rippled through the chamber. Some members shook their heads in disbelief. Others exchanged knowing glances. Jack, Councillor Hansen spoke up, a seasoned diplomat with a stern voice. While this is tragic, are you suggesting we escalate tensions over a pet? Jack's eyes met Hansen's, fiery and unyielding. Not just a pet, Counselor. An innocent life. Today it's a dog on Earth. Tomorrow it could be a child on Mars. Or a family on Titan. Where does it end? A younger Counselor, Lee, leaned forward. Jack's right. We've seen increasing reports of Draconis activities near human settlements. We need to address this, not just for Spark, but for the safety of all human and allied territories. Counselor Vargas, known for her cautious approach, raised her hand. But what do you propose, Jack? An official protest? Sanctions? Jack paused, his mind racing with images of Spark's joyful face. I propose a show of strength. 
We increase patrols in joint territories and demand accountability and reparations from the Draconis Empire. We must show them that any action against Earth and its citizens is unacceptable. Counselor Zhao, a military strategist, nodded in agreement. I support this. We have the capabilities to reinforce our positions and make it clear we're not to be trifled with. Mara chimed in, her voice firm. We also need to communicate this incident to our allies. If the Draconis are willing to escalate to violence so quickly, we need a united front. The room buzzed as more counselors began to discuss among themselves. Jack's proposal was gaining traction. The initial shock of his news turned into a catalyst for action. Counselor Hansen sighed, looking between his peers. All right, Jack, we'll draft a resolution, but we proceed carefully. We're not at war, yet. Jack nodded, though his heart pounded with a mix of grief and anger. Thank you. I'll coordinate with our forces and prepare our next steps. As the meeting adjourned, Jack stepped outside, his thoughts heavy. He looked up at the sky, imagining the vastness of space and the many worlds beyond his reach where similar stories might be unfolding. Spark's death would not be in vain. This was just the beginning. Walking back to his office, he received a message from an old friend, now a captain in the space fleet. Heard about Spark. Sorry, Jack. We're with you. All the way. Jack clenched his jaw, determination setting in. Thanks, Max. I might need your help soon. The course was set. Jack had planted the seeds of a movement that might well lead to a confrontation he had never sought, but now could not avoid. The Draconis had underestimated humanity's attachment to their companions, their loved ones. Jack would make sure they realized their mistake. Jack sat in the dim light of a corner booth at the Interstellar Brew, a pub known for its discretion and the eclectic mix of clientele it attracted, humans, aliens, and everyone in between. His eyes scanned the room, noting each entrance and exit, a habit from his military days that never quite left him. The door swung open, casting a slice of light across the shadowy figures inside. A tall figure entered, silhouetted against the bright lights of the station's main concourse. It was Mira, an old comrade from his days in the Galactic Patrol, and behind her, a towering Varaxian named Thorn, known for his skills in electronic warfare. Jack, Mira greeted, sliding into the booth across from him. Her eyes were wary as she glanced around. This isn't a social call, is it? No, it's not. Jack's voice was low. I'm putting together a team. We need to strike back at the Draconis, make them pay for what they've done. Thorn grunted, his deep voice rumbling through the booth. The Draconis have made enemies all over the galaxy. What makes you think you can trust us? Jack met Thorn's gaze steadily. Because you've both seen what happens when they go unchecked. Mira, you lost your station because of them. And Thorn, your people have been pushed to the brink. We have a common enemy. Mira nodded slowly, the memories evident in her eyes. You're right. I'm in. What's the plan? Sabotage, Jack outlined briefly. Hit their supply lines, their communication networks. Show them that Earth isn't just going to roll over. A new voice joined the conversation as another figure approached their table. And you'll need information for that. It was Syl, a slight shadowy figure from the Raylan Confederacy, an expert in gathering intelligence. I've heard what happened, Jack. Count me in. The group leaned closer, forming a tight circle as Jack detailed the targets and potential risks. The plan was daring, bordering on reckless, but each of them understood the stakes. As they finalized their strategy, Jack's communicator buzzed. It was a message from Counselor Lee, reminding him of the delicate political situation. He glanced at the message and then back at his newly formed team. We have to be smart about this, he cautioned. Any misstep could lead to war. Mira placed her hand on the table, her determination clear. We've all been in tough spots before. We'll handle this. Thorne nodded, his large hand forming a fist. And we'll send a message that no one harms our people without consequence. The meeting wrapped up with each member of the team knowing their role. They dispersed into the shadows of the station, a silent agreement binding them together. Jack stayed back, finishing his drink. The weight of leadership pressed on him, a mix of fear and adrenaline. He knew the path ahead would be fraught with danger, but there was no turning back. For Spark, for humanity, he was ready to fight. Jack and his team huddled in the shadows on the outskirts of a Draconis-controlled colony at the border of human space. The night was silent, except for the occasional hum of distant machinery and the soft rustling of wind through the sparse vegetation. They were all clad in dark, non-reflective gear, faces streaked with camouflage. 
Everyone knows their part? Jack whispered, his gaze moving from face to face. Mira nodded, her hand resting on the blaster at her side. Thorn, larger and more imposing even in the dim light, checked the settings on a small device that would soon wreak havoc on the colony's communications network. Syl, always the quiet one, simply raised a thumb in affirmation, her eyes locked onto the data pad that displayed the layout of the outpost. Remember, in and out. We're not here to engage unless absolutely necessary, Jack instructed. His heart raced with the adrenaline of impending action, a feeling he hadn't experienced since his days in active service. The team split up, each moving towards their objective. Jack and Mira headed towards the main fuel depot, a critical target that would cripple the outpost's ability to send reinforcements quickly. As they approached, Jack scanned the area with a thermal imager. Two guards on the north end, another patrolling the east side. Timing has to be perfect. Mira nodded, her focus absolute. They waited in the darkness, timing the patrol's movements. As the lone guard wandered off, obscured by the large fuel tanks, they made their move. Silently, they advanced. Jack took the lead, his old training kicking in, every sense alert. They reached the depot undetected and quickly set the charges, programmed to give them enough time to get clear. Meanwhile, Thorne and Syl had reached the communications center. Thorne attached his device to the external panel of the building. The small box blinked twice and then emitted a low beep. All communications from the outpost would soon be redirected to meaningless space. Done here. Let's rendezvous. Thorne's voice came through the comm, low and hurried. Jack tapped his own communicator twice in acknowledgement. Then he and Mira began their retreat. As they turned to leave, the sharp sound of an alarm pierced the night. The outpost was awake now, lights flickering on as soldiers poured out. Change of plans. Meet at the secondary point. Jack called into his comm, sprinting with Mira close behind. Explosions rocked the night as the fuel depot ignited, sending a massive fireball into the sky. Jack felt the heat on his face even from a distance, the roar of the flames mingling with the chaos of alarms and shouting. They reached the rendezvous point, finding Thorn and Syl already there, both breathing heavily but unharmed. The team didn't stop to celebrate. They moved quickly, disappearing into the night as the outposts scrambled to respond to the sabotage. Once they were safely away, hidden in the dense foliage of a nearby ridge, Jack allowed himself a moment to assess the situation. The mission was a success, but they had stirred a hornet's nest. Everyone good? he asked, looking at his team. They were tired, faces smeared with soot and sweat, but alive. Mira was checking her gear, repacking swiftly. We hit them hard, Jack. That's going to make them think twice about ignoring us. Jack nodded, but his mind was already on the next move. This is just the beginning, he said, his voice grim. They'll retaliate. We need to be ready. As the first light of dawn began to touch the sky, the team made their way back to their hidden ship. The fight had only just begun, and Jack knew that the path ahead would be fraught with more danger and possibly greater losses. But for now, they had struck the first blow for Spark, and for humanity. The aftermath of the sabotage operation was felt far beyond the smoldering ruins of the Draconis outpost. News of the attack spread quickly, reaching the highest echelons of interstellar politics. Within hours, Jack and his team found themselves at the center of a galactic controversy as emergency sessions were convened in the Galactic Council. In a secure room aboard their ship, orbiting a neutral planet, Jack and his team watched the live feed of the Council session. Various species, representing a myriad of star systems, voiced their opinions on the incident. The human faction has gone too far this time hissed a Draconis ambassador, his scaled skin shimmering with agitation. This unprovoked aggression on a military outpost is an act of war. Jack clenched his fists, his eyes locked on the screen. Unprovoked? They killed an innocent and call our response unprovoked? He muttered under his breath. Mira placed a reassuring hand on his shoulder. Stay focused, Jack. We knew the backlash would be severe. We're prepared for this. Another figure rose to speak a Telenan diplomat known for her peacekeeping efforts. Let us not rush to judgment. We must consider what led to these actions. The humans have reported multiple provocations by the Draconis that went unaddressed by this council. The chamber erupted in noise, with different factions arguing loudly. Syl turned to Jack, her voice steady. The council won't decide anything quickly, but we've certainly sparked a debate. This could work in our favor. The Draconis aren't as united as they appear. Thorn grunted in agreement. 
And we've got allies who are just waiting for someone to make the first move. We should reach out, strengthen our position. Jack nodded. Prepare to send out communications. We'll need to rally support quietly. If the Council won't act, we'll form our own coalition. The team got to work, sending encrypted messages to potential allies across the galaxy. Meanwhile, Jack continued to monitor the Council's session, analyzing each diplomat's stance and reaction. As the debates raged on, a message arrived from Councillor Lee, one of Earth's representatives. Jack, your actions have sparked a powder keg here. Some are calling for your arrest, others for commendation. We're doing what we can to mediate, but be prepared for any outcome. Jack responded with a grim nod, even though Lee couldn't see him. Understood. Keep us updated. We're mobilizing support on our end. Hours turned into days as the Council struggled to reach a consensus. The galactic media covered every angle from calls for peace to demands for retribution. Throughout this turbulent time, Jack's team solidified their network, connecting with disenfranchised factions and preparing for the possibility of an escalated conflict. In a quiet moment, away from his team, Jack reflected on the path he had chosen. The stakes were higher than ever, but he felt a resolve hardened by necessity and the memory of Spark's playful bark. This was no longer just about revenge, it was about shaping the future of human-alien relations in a galaxy that had grown too complacent about the Draconis threat. As Jack rejoined his team, they gathered around the hollow table, maps of potential hotspots and ally territories glowing in soft blue light. This is bigger than any of us anticipated, he admitted. But together we have a chance to change the galaxy for the better. Determined faces met his gaze, each member ready to follow him into the storm. Jack knew the road ahead would be fraught with challenges, but he also knew they wouldn't face them alone. The galaxy was watching, and it was time to show what humanity stood for. In the wake of the Galactic Council's indecision, Jack realized the necessity of broadening their network of allies. The strategy session took place in a secluded meeting room on a remote outpost known for its neutral stance, a place where various species mingled without allegiance to any particular faction. As Jack entered the room, he was met by an assembly of representatives from several alien races, each with their own reasons for opposing the Draconis Empire. Among them was a delegate from the Krilani Union, a race of skilled engineers whose territories bordered Draconis space, and a pair from the Zenthari Confederacy, known for their stealth technology. Jack started the meeting with a firm tone. Thank you all for coming. We're here because we share a common threat, the Draconis Empire's aggression. Together, we have the opportunity to form a coalition that not only resists their expansion, but also protects our sovereignties. As Anthari spoke, her voice a soft hiss. Our people have suffered from Draconis raids for cycles. Your actions at the outpost have shown us that resistance is possible. What do you propose? We need a unified military strategy and shared intelligence, Jack explained, activating the hollow table to display star maps with strategic points. Here and here are their supply lines. If we disrupt these, we cut off their support to the outer systems, weakening their forward operations. The Krilani delegate, a towering figure with a metallic sheen to his skin, nodded. Our engineers can sabotage their warp gates. Without them, their fleet movements become slower and predictable. Mira, standing beside Jack, added, And with the Zenthari's stealth tech, we can infiltrate and gather intel, maybe even take out key targets without direct confrontations. The meeting evolved into a tactical discussion, each delegate contributing their strengths to the plan. Thorne, who had been silent, finally spoke. We'll need secure lines of communication. I can set up an encrypted network that links all our forces without detection. As the strategy session drew to a close, Jack felt a sense of camaraderie with these unlikely allies, each motivated by a mix of survival and resistance against a common foe. However, as the delegates began to disperse, a Krelani approached Jack privately. Commander Jack, while our goals align now, remember that alliances in war are fluid. We are committed, but we also must protect our interests. Jack understood the underlying message. Trust was a commodity in short supply. I appreciate your support and candor. Let's focus on our common enemy and hope our newfound alliance holds strong. As the delegates left, Jack and his team gathered to review the commitments they had secured. We're building something bigger than any of us, Jack remarked but we'll need to be vigilant. Each group may have their own agendas beyond fighting the Draconis. Mira responded, It's a risk, but it's necessary. We're no longer a small group fighting back. We're a coalition, and that gives us a real chance. As they prepared to leave, 
Jack looked over the star map, dotted with markers representing their combined forces. This was the beginning of a significant resistance movement, potentially powerful enough to challenge the Draconis Empire. But he also knew that with larger movements came greater complexities. Now, more than ever, they needed to be strategic, cautious, and prepared for internal as well as external challenges. The coalition forces gathered in the command center, their eyes fixed on the large holographic displays showing the vast expanse of the Orion's belt system. It was a critical junction for interstellar travel, making it the perfect choke point to cut off the Draconis Empire's supply lines. Jack, flanked by Mira and his other key advisors, watched as the coalition fleets maneuvered into position. The tension in the room was palpable. This battle could very well determine the future of their resistance. Are all units in position? Jack asked, his voice calm but carrying an edge of anticipation. Yes, Commander. All squads report ready, Mira responded, her focus on the fleet communications. Good. Initiate the first strike. Let's show them what we're made of, Jack commanded, his hand clenched into a fist. As the first volleys of plasma fire lit up the void, the Draconis forces were quick to respond. Their ships, larger and seemingly more formidable, advanced with a terrifying precision. But what they had in firepower, Jack's coalition matched in agility and resolve. Thorn, leading a group of electronic warfare specialists, managed to disrupt the enemy's communications, sowing confusion among their ranks. Jamming signals are holding. They're blind out there, he reported, a hint of satisfaction in his voice. Simultaneously, the Xanthari stealth units, cloaked and nearly invisible to sensors, slipped through the Draconis defenses to sabotage their main artillery platforms. Explosions bloomed silently in space as their targets were systematically dismantled. Artillery support is down. The path is clear, a Xanthari commander communicated through the encrypted network. Jack nodded to Mira, who coordinated the next phase. All units push forward. Target their command ships. Isolate them from the rest. The battle raged, a chaotic dance of light and shadow against the backdrop of stars. Each side pushed and pulled, gaining and losing ground by the minute. As the coalition began to encircle the flagship of the Draconis fleet, Jack readied his team for a direct assault. Prepare to board. We end this now, he declared, loading his blaster and checking his gear. Boarding the Draconis flagship was perilous. The corridors echoed with the sounds of fierce combat, the air heavy with the smell of scorched metal and ozone. Jack led his team with precision, cutting down Draconis soldiers who stood in their path. Finally, they breached the command center. The Draconis Admiral, a towering figure clad in ornate armor, turned to face him. Surrender, Jack demanded, his blaster trained on the Admiral. Your fleet is defeated. End this conflict and spare your crew further loss. The Admiral, his eyes narrowing, surveyed the wreckage around him, a scene of desperation and defeat. After a tense moment, he lowered his weapon. I yield, he declared solemnly. Jack secured the Admiral's surrender and opened a channel to the rest of the fleet. The command ship is ours. Stand down and regroup. We've won. Cheers erupted across the Coalition's communications channels, a cacophony of relief and triumph. As the remnants of the Draconis fleet retreated, Jack and his allies began the arduous task of consolidating their hold over Orion's belt. The victory was not without cost. As they accounted for their losses, the weight of command pressed heavily on Jack. Yet in this pivotal moment, the Coalition had not only survived, but had also sent a clear message across the galaxy. Unity in diversity was not just an ideal, it was a formidable force. Now, as they set about repairing and rebuilding, Jack knew the true challenge lay ahead. Peace would require as much courage and determination as war. With the Draconis Empire reeling, there was a new opportunity for diplomacy and understanding, one that Jack was determined to lead. As the fleets regrouped and the stars shone brightly above, a new chapter in galactic history was beginning, forged by the fires of Orion's Belt. As the debris from the Battle of Orion's Belt floated through the vastness of space, Jack surveyed the damage from the command deck of the Coalition's flagship. The victory had been significant, but the cost was palpable. Ships from various races, now crippled or adrift, served as somber reminders of the brutal realities of war. We've secured the sector, Jack, Mira reported, her voice weary yet relieved. Draconis forces are retreating across all fronts. It's a decisive victory. Jack nodded solemnly, his eyes scanning the casualty reports scrolling across the screen. Organize teams for search and rescue operations. We need to recover survivors and honor the fallen. Mira acknowledged the order and quickly set to work, coordinating with the various ships in their makeshift fleet. 
As she did, Jack turned to address his other commanders, representatives of the Allied races who had stood by humanity in its darkest hour. Thanks to your courage and commitment, we've achieved something remarkable today, Jack began, his voice echoing softly in the hushed room. But our work is far from over. We must use this moment not only to secure our defenses, but to build a lasting peace. The gathered leaders nodded, their expressions a mix of exhaustion and resolve. Thorn, the Vraxian tactician, stepped forward. The Draconis are weakened but not defeated. We should expect them to regroup and retaliate. You're right, Jack agreed. We need to be vigilant, but we also need to reach out to them. This war started because of a tragic misunderstanding and a series of escalations. We need to ensure that it ends with dialogue. This proposal sparked a murmur among the group. Sill, the Raylan intelligence officer, spoke up. Opening communications with the Draconis after all they've done will be controversial. Many will see it as weakness. Jack met her gaze firmly. It's not weakness to seek peace. We've shown our strength. Now we must show our wisdom. I believe it's the only way to prevent future conflicts and loss of life. The meeting concluded with plans to fortify their position while extending an olive branch to the Draconis. As the leaders dispersed to carry out their tasks, Jack stayed behind, looking out at the stars. Later, aboard a medical ship, Jack visited the wounded, speaking words of comfort and gratitude to the soldiers and pilots who had risked everything. Among them were humans, Xanthari, Krilani, and others a testament to the Coalition's diversity and unity. One young pilot, her arm in a sling, looked up at Jack. Did we really make a difference, sir? She asked, her voice tinged with pain and hope. Jack offered a small, sad smile. Yes, we did, and we'll continue to do so. You helped save many lives and brought us closer to peace. That's worth everything. Feeling the weight of his responsibilities, Jack returned to the command deck. He drafted a message to the Draconis leadership proposing a ceasefire and peace talks. Sending it required a deep breath and a steady hand, but as he pressed the transmit button, he felt a cautious optimism. The war had brought destruction, but in its wake, there was a chance for reconstruction and reconciliation. As he watched the stars, Jack knew the road ahead would be fraught with challenges. However, the unity and resilience shown by the Coalition gave him hope that a galactic peace was within reach. The galaxy was watching, and under Jack's leadership, humanity was not just surviving. It was paving the way toward a future where such conflicts could be resolved not by weapons, but by words and mutual respect. As he turned from the viewport, Jack carried with him the determination to ensure that the sacrifices made would lead to a lasting peace, honoring both the memory of Spark and the brave souls who had fought by his side.